Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mostly Football. In fact, it's episode seven. Tonight, I got TJ, Mr. Whiskey, in the house with me. We're talking NBA Finals, and we're talking AFC North. I hope you're ready for a great show, because it's going to be a blistery one. Oh, yeah. Gotta really feel it on this one. And hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are ready for the show. We got the sound effects in full effect. TJ, I hope you're ready to get wild tonight. Uh, yeah, let's go, man. We're doing this. Finally, we know what the NBA Finals matchup is going to be. The Boston Celtics will take on the Golden State Warriors. This coming Thursday, the first game of the series is happening. I will admit, I didn't follow along. If you've been following this show, you know I have not been following along very well with the Celtics Heat matchup, even though I should have been. It was a great series. I just didn't follow the star power. You know, Jimmy Butler... Tatum, Jalen Brown, you know, they're all great guys. Bam Adebayo, I just, when you tell me Luka Doncic versus Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and those guys, like, I just, I get lost. I get lost in the stars, and I missed a really good series. So, yeah, we'll get into the NBA final stuff. We will, unfortunately, get into some very sad news, something that happened today, in fact. A young man passed away, a uh, member of the NFL, and also... Um, TJ and I talked about it before the show. We also wanted to give a little special dedication here to the parents and the victims, anyone involved in the Uvalde um, tragedy, Uvalde, Texas, that happened this past week as well. Um, TJ and I decided it would be a nice thing to, you know, hopefully dedicate this show to to them and to their memory and to whoever is impacted by it. I know we're probably going to say a lot of goofy things and probably even curse a few times throughout the show, so. I don't want to try and make it seem like, you know, we're going to make too much of an impact here, but it would be nice to at least mention them, like TJ said. And if you want to follow that up with anything, TJ, I know you're closer, obviously, in the area. Not that it's not a person to person thing. Obviously, I can feel the tragedy, but you being right there in Texas, I mean, I'm sure you have something to say as well. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's kind of weird for me because it's, I don't know anything about the town itself. I mean, they're, I don't know, three, four hours from here. Um, me and Sam have talked about it all week long since it happened. Um, we're, you know, it's, it, it's any parent's worst nightmare come true. Um, and even here in Dallas, Fort Worth, where I'm at, you feel the effects of it. I mean, parents are devastated. I mean, even, even people that it didn't affect, you know, as a parent, you, you sit back and you think, gosh, do I send my kid to school for the last day of school? And then I think there were like three other shootings that happened or they found guns in the parking lot of schools. And it's just, it's one of those things that it's a real eye opener. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm not one to make anything political. I, I, I stay away from that side of anything uh, for many reasons. Um, I just, I, I'll say this and I'll leave it at that. What happened should have never happened, obviously. Uh, and there's a part of me that wants to say that my heart goes out to those families. And I know that's not enough. There's, there, there's nothing that you can say or do because those parents are having to come home to an empty house without their babies. Um, and it's, something's got to change. That's all I'm going to say about it. Something's got to change. What I, I, I don't have that answer and I'm not going to even try to, you know, even state my opinion on it. It's sad. My heart goes out to everybody and we got to do better folks. That's it. Yeah, I mean, to follow up, you know, the the statement, something's got to change. It is true. If I was going to give my two cents on it, I would think that something that needs to change is, you know, just all the love possible pouring into the world. And anyone who is depressed or um, anxious, very disturbed in any way and really needs help, hopefully they're seeking out the help that they need. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I used to have an opinion on this whole gun control issue and whenever something like this tragedy would happen that has since changed. I don't think I have the same opinion now that I did, you know, maybe five, definitely not 10 years ago. So um, I do have a, an entirely 
different opinion now than I did a while ago on the whole matter. But what's important is I do think, you know, that we need to emphasize here that the people who commit these tragedies aren't, you know, it, it's not when you think of the grand scale of things and all the gun owners in this country, like, it, it, you know, if, if, if it, everyone who had a gun was committing atrocities like this, it would be, you know, I mean, talk about a, a pile up. It would just be ridiculous. And that would just be insane. So I don't think that every person who is mentally ill is a shooter. I just happen to think that every shooter is mentally ill, if that makes any sense to anyone. Um, so uh, that's just my two piece on it. And it's not to stigmatize the mentally ill. It's just saying, hopefully they're getting the help they need. Um, you know, a lot of laws on the books right now that hopefully if they get enforced the way they should be, or I know the whole, uh, discussion between federal and state laws and this and that gets into a whole jumble that obviously this sports show isn't going to dive <laughs> too deep into tonight. Maybe check us out tomorrow on just be a dad podcast and see, but, uh, same time, same place. But uh, yeah, here we're just going to, you know, give our condolences and kind of move on, give them the peace of not really trying to make this a political thing, like you said, or be right or wrong about it. <clears throat> right. But we uh, unfortunately need to transition from one tragedy to another. Uh, the Uvalde shooting. And also this happened today. NFL player Jeff Gladney dies in Dallas crash at age of 25. May 30th, 2022. From the Houston Chronicle, Jeff Gladney, a defensive back for the NFL's Arizona Cardinals, died Monday in a car crash in Dallas. He was 25. Gladney's death was confirmed by the Cardinals and his agent. Quote, we are devastated to learn of Jeff Gladney's passing. Our hearts go out to his family, friends, and all who are mourning this tremendous loss, the team said. The crash occurred on the service road of Woodall Rogers Freeway in Dallas, KTVT TV reported. Another person also died. I believe it was a female, as you said, um, TJ. Yeah. Uh, the Dallas County Sheriff's Department said no one was available on the Memorial Day holiday to talk about the crash. Gladney played at TCU before becoming a 2020 first round draft pick of the Minnesota Vikings. He played in 16 games that year, but was released before the 2021 season when he was charged with assaulting a woman. Glad he was found not guilty in Dallas County, Texas in March and was subsequently signed by the Cardinals. He participated in team drills last week. Well, we are asking prayers for the family and privacy at this most difficult time. Agent Brian Overstreet said the NFL said Gladney's death was, quote, a tragic loss. So there you go. Unfortunately, a lot of bad news to start off this show. Um, you know, I know you weren't very familiar with the particular player, TJ, but still, I mean, a human loss is a human loss, and we can give our condolences yet again for everyone involved. And when it comes to things like this, I mean, I did see in another article that speeding was involved. So hopefully, um, you know, I don't whether or not there was alcohol or drugs, and it's kind of of a, a moot point here. Uh, let's just all say, you know, don't drive drunk. I think we can just establish that, you know, right. don't drive under the influence no matter what. So. Yeah, uh, more sad news. Uh, the NFL loses another another life to uh, car accidents, man. That's crazy. I hate it. Young man struck down, 25 years old. Too young. Too soon. Way too young. You know, you had um, Henry Ruggs involved in a crash. Uh, fortunately, he's okay. But I do believe there was a victim in that car crash as well. So it's just, man, it's, you hate to see it. <clears throat> when you have when you have instances like this, the only thing I can think of is, you know, especially in your, you know, young adulthood. And I say that 18 to we'll say 28, uh, you think you're invincible. And I'm here to attest that you're not. I'm learning that as 36 years old, that I'm not as young as I used to be. And I'm not invincible. I am, in fact, human. And my body reminds me of that daily. So. And that's the truth. I have to stretch. You know, you, you really feel it when you get to an age where you wake up and you're like, oh, I think I need to stretch. <laughs> right. Well, here we are. The Celtics and the Heat wrapped up their thrilling series. Um, let's go to NBA.com here for some highlights of the matchup. And finishing with Jimmy Butler trying to win the game on a three. Unfortunately, uh, well, came up short, as you will see here. Heat still alive. Struz. 
Fading to his right for the three there to bring it close. Drive down low by the heat. Lowry underneath. Pushes him down. They were going to beat themselves. Going to make it tough. Going to fight till the end. Championship team. Can't ever quite slam the door, but have to grind it out. You know, that was the case tonight. Mask looks good. And you know, I should have watched more of this series because Mark is smart. I love to watch him play. Butler, open shot, takes it. Ah. Yep. And the lead. I thought it would have been an incredible storyline, you know, Jimmy, to, to pull up and hit that. Eric Spolstra on the mic. I love that. About I don't him. like him as a coach. I don't know why. I just <laughs> don't. <laughs> he looks so much. I thought for sure that was going down. I got to say, I think that's a bad decision by Butler. That's not the strength of your game. You yeah. know, I'm going to stop right there. Yeah. I, I have a problem with all these so-called experts and analysts and everything else on the – if he makes that shot, he's a hero. If yeah, he that's... misses that shot like he did, he's a bum. So th- th- these are professional basketball players, and, and I know it's corny to say, and it, it kind of goes without saying, you know, Michael Jordan said it best. You miss – said it best. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. So f- for these analysts to say, well, that was a bad decision, you're fighting to be in the NBA Finals. There's no bad shot. I'm sorry. There's not. Now, if he would have done that at half court – you might have had somewhat of an argument, but still. Well, yeah, and it's like I don't know if you heard the, I don't know if you heard it play out there, but he actually says uh, his co-host. That, I believe that's Jeff Van Gundy, former coach, saying that. Um, you know, he doesn't like the shot, and then. Space there, you can attack. I'm in agreement with you, but if he makes that shot, he's a hero. Yeah, so exactly. You, <laughs> yeah, you took the words right out of his mouth, TJ. Win, which I did, missed the shot. But uh, I'm taking that shot. Um, my teammates like the shot that I took, so I'm living with it. What's up, Dylan Moran? I was like, man, what the hell? But he missed. We get the rebound. We move on. The Boston Celtics mm. will go to the NBA Finals. What is going on, Dylan? Good to see you, sir. People sure do love to criticize. That's right. Registers 35. What a great series. Miami, I missed the entire thing, but from what I hear, it was really good. Thinking about that three that did not fall. Jimmy Butler, man. You know, as a guy that likes, I, I, I'm not a basketball guy. We all know this was established as many times on on this show and on Just Be a Dad. But um, as somebody who loves to hate on the Lakers for no apparent reason other than it's the Lakers, um, and now that LeBron is there, I just have more of a reason. Um, I'm pulling for the Celtics in this next series, even though I don't watch basketball. Um, but I think it's going to be the war. The, is it the war? Is it the Warriors or Golden? It's Golden State Warriors, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I'm I'm going to say the Warriors in seven, but I'm pulling for Boston to win it. Uh, yeah, I'm going to root for Boston for sure. I'm actually going to watch the finals. I think it'll be good. Um, it's just once the, the Warriors start, you know what, this soundboard app, man, I tell you. It's just a pain right in my keister. Um, the Warriors, once they start raining those threes, it can get tough to deal with Dylan Moran coming in. Jimmy Butler is the next D Wade. Maybe not skill level, but he will be an amazing player for the Heat who will be forgotten with time. Uh, man, that's, jeez. Forgotten with time. That's pretty harsh. He probably will be, unfortunately. Uh, D. Wade will, I'm sure, be. I think people are going to mention D. Wade when you say the Heat before Jimmy Butler every time. But he's definitely done a lot with a little. Uh, I think it's been, what, Hero, Adebayo, and how's it looking there? I think your focus is good, but, man. Is it a screw thing? You got a screw loose? It's called duct tape. (laughs) Damn, duct tape. (laughs) But yeah, um, I think that's probably true. I miss the, I miss the days of you know LeBron, D Wade, Ray Allen. Those were fun. Did you watch those Heat days, TJ? Yeah, because the Mavericks beat the Heat in one series. Wow, you would, you would take it there. I would. <laughs> Damn, Skippy. Flipping over to the New York Post, five 
2022 NBA final storylines that will decide Celtics Warriors. This from who's the author here? Let's give this credit to Mark Berman. <clears throat> First, will the Celtics physical defense be allowed by refs to flex its muscles? Meaning, will they be allowed to foul? If I'm not mistaken, right? Is that what that means? Uh, maybe. I again, not a basketball guy, so I can I I don't really know. Will there or will there not be prison rules? Dylan coming back in. People always forget about D Wade unless you specially talk about the Heat or LBJ's teammates. He's never someone people just bring up when talking top tens. That's fair. I would totally agree with that. I think I'm I think right. he deserves to be in the top ten. And just my opinion. And again, this is coming from a guy who's not a basketball guy. I'm going to reiterate that yet again. Um, but I, when you're talking in the last forty years of basketball. Four zero forty, you've got to bring him up because without D Wade, I don't think the Heat really had much of a chance. I agree. I just, if you're going to go top ten in the last forty years, I still think, man, it'd be for me, it'd probably be tough to sneak D Wade in there. But I'm not going to do that right now because neither one of us are <laughs> the most skilled in the NBA, and it would take all night. And we'd be throwing names in there like Chris Birdman Anderson. Uh, next up, Golden State's finals experience versus the Celtics prideful legacy. Speaking of Celtic pride, have you ever seen the movie Celtic pride, TJ? Uh, With Dan Aykroyd and Damon Wayans. I've seen bits and pieces. I've never actually watched the whole thing through. And the other guy who was Marv, Marv in uh, Home Alone. <clears throat> uh, I forget his name. Oh, well, gosh. It's not Al Pacino. What is it's definitely dad? not Al Pacino. What is his dad gum name? Wow. Wow. Let's get a. <laughs> yeah, definitely not Al Pacino. Next up, the Tatum factor. Perkins, I'm sure referring to. Uh, Joe Pesci. Uh, Perkins, the breakfast spot. Perkins said if the Celtics pull this off, Kendrick Perkins, of course. Celtics pull this off, Tatum's playoff run should be considered arguably the best individual postseason march in NBA history. Wow. He would have slayed Durant, Giannis, never saying that last name, Atenkapo. TJ, help me out here. <laughs> I can't even see it. Uh, he slayed Durant, Giannis, Jimmy Butler, and Curry in succession. Wow. Tatum's playoff run, I'll read that again should be considered arguably the best individual postseason march in NBA history. Kendrick Perkins coming in with those hotcakes. See what I did there? Uh, a key is whether Udoka can force Curry to defend Tatum on switches. In the playoffs, Tatum is averaging 27 points. Excuse me. And 5.9 assists. Let's round it up there. 5.9 assists while shooting 37.5% from three. Jeez. Next up, the Celtics need... Rebounding wins championships. You're damn right it does. This is an old axiom that got supplanted in the three-point shooting small ball era perfected by the Warriors. The Celtics, even when they play small ball with center Robert Williams on the bench, are a mighty rebounding team. Center Kevon Looney has helped Golden State's boardwalk, boardwalk, board work in the last under the board in the last two series. William's sore knee is still a tricky issue, and he looked lost in Game 7 win over the Heat. Dang. Defensive rebounding, quote, will be a major part of this series for Golden State, a talent evaluator said. A talent evaluator, huh? They don't have to win this battle, but can't get crushed. Sheesh. Tell me about it. Can the Celtics, and last but not least, can the Celtics' plotting offense keep up? The Warriors have a league-best 116.1 offensive rating in the playoffs, so Boston has a lot to live up to. And the Warriors are likely getting back injured. Defensive specialist Gary Payton III, Andre Iguodala, and Otto Porter Jr. Quote, both teams are great defensively, so it will be fun to watch if scoring is hard to come by, a scout said. Another scout said Williams will need, quote, to find a way to impact the game and take away Green's strength of defending off the ball one scout said the Celtics beat a very tired-looking Heat team. TJ, who you got in this series? Man, um, I'm going to say the Warriors in seven, but know that when I say this, I am emphatically saying I am 
pulling for Boston. Just I'm pulling so, for Boston, baby. Just so I can rub it in Lakers fans' faces. Yep. I'm pulling for Boston. I don't have a good sound effect for that. We're shipping up to Boston, that's for sure. I want to hear it. I want to see it. I'm going to watch Celtics Pride after this is over, if nobody's awake, hopefully. Fingers crossed. But yeah, I, I want Boston to win. My head tells me it's going to be the Warriors, though. Um. Well, I think we're done uh, in un, in uncharted territory. I think we're done treading on uh, these waters we're not familiar with. TJ, you ready to move into something we're a little more familiar with? Uh, yeah, let's talk some football, man, because I want to talk about something I actually know what the hell I'm talking about. Finally, dude. AFC North. Let's do it. Let's talk the bruising, blistering, cold, hard-nosed, just, you know, when you think AFC North, I'm thinking Joey Porter. I'm thinking James Harrison. You know, I'm thinking the old school, uh, the old uh, Iron Curtain, if you know, the old Steel Curtain, if you know what I'm saying. Lambert and the boys, Mean Joe Green and the boys, you know what I'm saying, Mel Blunt out there. Yeah, how about that Ravens defense in 2000? We're talking Ray Lewis. We're talking Ed Reed. When I think, I mean, that the Browns, sure, there's been some Browns, but who can name them? The Bengals, I mean, Boover and Sison until recently. But when I think AFC North, I love that Pittsburgh-Baltimore rivalry, and I love the defense that gets played up there. What do you think of when you think AFC North, TJ? Uh, I'm with you, the Baltimore, the Steelers. I mean, it's for the most part. I know in recent years there was that one year where uh, the Browns just kind of owned the Steelers in the first half. But uh, that whole division, man, it's good, bad, and different. You know, when those four teams play each other, any of the four, it's going to be just a absolute slobber knocker. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were too much of a pro wrestling fan not to say slobber knocker. Oh my god, I should have bet money. It is funny because I was I was carrying there and I was carrying. I was like, "What's the word I'm looking for? What's the?" And that was the first word that popped into my head. Oh my god, I love it. <clears throat> well, let's start off here with the uh, defending AFC conference champions coming out of nowhere. The Cincinnati Bengals with second year QB Joe Burrow went all the way to the Super Bowl, ladies and gentlemen. Took on Matt Stafford in the L.A. Rams. Came up short, but goddamn, it was a good game. It was a great run. And I can't wait to see what they have in store this year. They decided to shore up the offensive line coming into this year. That was a big weakness in the playoffs last year. I mean, Joe Burrow was getting hammered left and right in the playoffs on the AFC side you know, of it. So I knew when it came time to face Aaron Donald, it was going to be ugly. And it was. But more, Burrow is a tough son of a gun. He stands in there. He still delivers throws. He looks good. Moves around good, even after the knee injury. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about some key additions. They shored up the offensive line, as I said, with center Ted Karras. Or Karras. Never really got a pronunciation on that. Uh, guard Alex Kappa coming in from, I believe, Tampa Bay. So there's some Super Bowl experience there. Lyle Collins coming over from the Dallas Cowboys to finish there Oof. on the offensive line. And then they drafted uh, defensive back. He's kind of a... A chess piece can play corner, can play safety, and Daxon Hill and a few other players as well. But man, the additions they made on defense last year, particularly Trey Hendrickson, um, and now showing up the offensive line to go with all the weapons they have when you got Mixon in the backfield, Jamar Chase, obviously, Higgins, and Tyler Boyd. Man, it's tough not to see, uh, it's tough not to see some. Some wins in the column for Cincinnati, but I think people are going to be surprised with what I have for a, uh, a win total here. TJ, did you get to take a good gander at the schedule yet? And do you have an idea of how many wins you wanted to give the Bengals? Oh, I'll tell you what. You spew out yours first. Let me let me take another gander at the schedule. All right. So let's just go through it real quick. They open up the season September 11th at home against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh looking to see who their quarterback is going to be. Um, so that's an easy win for me right up front. Then they travel to Dallas. They go to New York to take on the Jets, J-E-T-S. And then on Thursday, they come back September 29th to take on, at home, the Miami Dolphins. Then they follow that up with two trips on the road at Baltimore, at New Orleans. Then they come home. So they're kind of doing this home game, two away games, home game, two away games thing until 
October 23rd, they're at home against Atlanta. Then they travel to Cleveland. Then they're back home. So it's only a one away game stretch. Uh, back home November 6th versus the Carolina Panthers. Then they have a bye week. Following up the bye week at Pittsburgh, at Tennessee, at home against Kansas City Chiefs, at home against the Cleveland Browns. Following that up with two away games at Tampa Bay, at New England. Then they finish the season with two home games. Very tough games, I would say. Uh, Buffalo and Baltimore. I gave the Cincinnati Bengals a Super Bowl contending AFC champion. Cincinnati Bengals only eight wins, my friend. Eight and nine. I think this what? Is- I think this is a tough, tough schedule, man. Um, especially following that bye week, I, I think they're gonna feel good going into it because I do think they're gonna have um, Atlanta at home. I think they're gonna whip up on them, and then you know we'll see about the away game at Cleveland. But I think that's a nice way to go into the bye week with a, a solid win, probably against Carolina. But man, at Pittsburgh, at Tennessee, and then you got a home game against Cleveland, or I mean Kansas City. That's a rough stretch right there. And then, you know, at home against Cleveland might not be easy, depending on how Deshaun Watson looks at that point in the season. It's late, December 11th. And then this right here, the last four games, murderers row at Tampa Bay, at New England, tough defense. Say what you will about uh, Mac Jones, but tough defense and run game for the Patriots. And then Buffalo and Baltimore, man. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough for me. The at Dallas game was particularly tricky week two. Uh, because obviously, you know, it's a road game and I just don't know what to expect from Dallas this year. I can't talk trash cause they still beat up on my Eagles, but damn. Yeah. I'm, I'm not very optimistic about Dallas next year, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. <laughs> yeah. We'll save, we'll save that. One. Um, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll give you a little sneak peek when we get to the NFC and the Dallas Philly division, I'm giving your Philly to win the division. So, you just made me harder than a diamond in a knife store, my friend. I'm going to say they're going to win 10 games. Um, the Bengals, looking at who all is in the AFC, I don't really see a whole lot of people that can challenge them when when, when it comes down to playoffs. Not saying that there aren't good teams out there. I'm not saying that, that, that they're better than everybody. Maybe somebody catches fire, but I just think that they kind of edge out everybody. On paper, on paper. Um, obviously, you're barring injury, barring this, barring that, and everything else that goes into play with the NFL. But um, I, I've got them returning back to the Super Bowl this year, man. I really do. No, yeah. I mean, look, the defense was hot last year. Uh, again, I'll mention, I'll say his name again, Trey Hendrickson. I think it really surprised people with just how effective he was. Getting after the quarterback last year for them was huge. Uh, you know, the, the – Overall, like the DBs were pretty solid. And then the linebackers, Logan Wilson from Wyoming was, you know, really developing into a nice leader for them uh, as uh, the team captain there. So, look, they're young. These draft picks are finally panning out with especially Joe Burrow. Obviously, he's just been the real deal since he stepped in. And they had the weapons. They had the defense. It was just the offensive line was a huge uh, missing piece. And now. Hopefully these additions will shore that up for them because, I mean, this might be – Cincinnati could be a powerhouse for years to come. You know, this is a, a Tampa Bay-looking team. If everything shores up, I'm not going to compare Joe Burrow to Tom Brady. I'm just saying if you're searching for holes, they're hard to come by on this team once you look at the signings they made on the offensive line to go with everything they've done on the defense over the past couple of years and then drafting all the weapons. You know, people thought they should have taken – uh, Penay Sewell, I believe it was, out of Oregon in the draft a couple of years ago. Well, last year, you know, offensive tackle out of Oregon, just so they could shore up the offensive line, they decided to go with Jamar Chase, give Joe Burrow another weapon, his homeboy from uh, college, and it really worked out for them. I mean, <laughs> weird storylines early on. People were making fun of Jamar <laughs> because he said the thing about, you know, the NFL ball being harder to catch than the college ball because it doesn't have the stripes, and people were kind of harping on him about that. But uh, it didn't take long. A couple 200-yard performances, and people knew that Jamar Chase was the real deal. So, yeah, I, I don't blame you at all for giving them 10 wins. A lot of talent on that team. Um, consistency in coaching. They didn't really lose anyone. I don't think. I mean, I should have looked into that. It shows what a great host I am. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, man. Cincinnati. Let's do it, baby. 
Moving on. TJ, who do you think our next team is? Oh. As I fall for time here. Let's see. Uh, Steelers? I decided to save the Steelers. Okay. We're going to talk about the Baltimore Ravens right now. Yeah, you know, they're getting less sexy to talk about as Lamar gets older in the league. But we got to talk about them because they've been consistently good since I've been watching football. Uh, they just know how to draft. They know how to get guys in there who are part of the culture, so to speak, and fit what they do. The coaching's been great from Marvin Lewis to Harbaugh now. Um, yeah, really can't harp on it. Let's talk about the additions for the Baltimore Ravens early on. I believe early on. Anyway, big safety signing. Marcus Williams comes over from New Orleans. They got defensive tackle Michael Pierce to go in there. Offensive lineman Morgan Moses coming in. DB Kyle Fuller. Hopefully he can fill in where uh, Jimmy Smith left off. And then they drafted because Philadelphia was uh, uh, wily. Decided to jump Baltimore and pick up Jordan Davis. I'm sure ruining Baltimore's plans. They decided to take Kyle Hamilton after that happened. Safety out of Notre Dame. And then followed that up with another first round selection. Offensive lineman out of Iowa, Tyler Linderbaum. And then in the second round, as Baltimore does, they usually find gems later on as well. They managed to snag David Ojabu, pass rusher out of Michigan, who fell due to an ACL. I believe it was ACL. Maybe it was Achilles tear. Uh, one or the other. But they're hoping he can be ready at some point during this next season to go in there with um, Owe, uh, another great pass rusher they got in last year's draft. Lost Jimmy Smith, lost Justin Houston. Hopefully they don't need those guys with the uh, additions they made. So, yeah, obviously everything, again, is going to fall on Lamar Jackson's shoulders and what they do with the read option in this offense. Uh, it was ridiculous what happened in Baltimore's training camp last season when it comes to running backs. J.K. Dobbins went down. Gus Edwards went down. Then you're like, oh, my God, what could happen next? And then Justice Hill goes down. And you're like, good Lord, it's just a curse to be in Baltimore's backfield at this point. So they had to make do with a bunch of different guys from Devontae Freeman to Le'Veon Bell to, uh, what was the name? Uh, the draft pick they had there who came in. Of course, I forget his name. Sorry, I forget your name. I had you on my fantasy team for a while. But yeah, Baltimore, man. Shot Bateman on the outside. No more Sammy Watkins. Hollywood Brown. I should mention, geez, talk about losses. Hollywood Brown traded during the draft to Arizona. So the weapons are reduced for Lamar Jackson on the outside. He was not happy about that, actually. I don't know if you saw during the draft, he tweeted out WTF <laughs> when the <laughs> trade went down. So, yeah, that's never good. But still got Mark Andrews at tight end. That's the big weapon for them. And then they rely on his legs in the running game. So let's just run through the schedule real quick here. Baltimore starts off the season at New York to take on the Jets. Then they're at home against the Dolphins at Patriots versus Bills versus Bengals and a Monday night, Sunday night, excuse me, Sunday night game versus the Bengals. That'd be a good one. Nice divisional um, night game there. <clears throat> then on the 16th of October, they travel to the Meadowlands to take on the Giants, bring it back home to take on the Browns. Then on Thursday, October 27th, this would be another good game. On Amazon Prime, traveling to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers. So look out for that one. And then they have another road game going to New Orleans. Uh, divisional matchup against the Saints. That's another primetime game, actually, on Monday night. So following up a Thursday night game with a Monday night game. Oof. Uh, that'll be fun. But I believe it's not, it's not the... F yeah, it won't be that Monday. It'll be the next. So that's kind of a, a good break for them, actually. And then after the Saints, they have a bye week. After the bye week on November 20th, they are at home against the Panthers. 27th at Jacksonville. December 4th at home against the Broncos. December 11th at Pittsburgh. Um, then on the December 18th or 17th, still to be determined, they travel to Cleveland. Christmas Eve, nice little present here as they take on the Falcons. Hopefully um, they can make quick work of them. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Nate. Sorry. Hopefully you're not watching. Hopefully you are watching. No, uh, I don't know. It's a Christmas Eve game. Obviously, when everyone's watching, you hope it's going to be a good game. 
Um, then on January 1st, New Year's, we have a great divisional matchup, my favorite. Uh, the Ravens taking on the Steelers at home. Then they finish their season at Cincinnati. TJ, I gave the Ravens seven wins, seven and ten for me. Uh, you're right. You're a man after my own heart. The same. That's exactly what I was thinking. And I'm going to call it right now. Say what you want. I don't care. I chose violence today. They're losing that first game against the Jets. J E T S Jets Jets Jets. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's a that's great. That's you know what, dude? You said that. Are you saying that? Wanna make beats? Right. I'm gonna figure this sound effect, but hold on. Once we get to it here. Yeah, I love it. I love you calling that. I think it's great. You got uh what's his face there? Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson, yes. Zach Wilson at home early on September 11th in New York. We're going to take on Lamar Jackson. God dang it with this freaking soundboard, man. That is exactly why I saw the September 11th. It's in New York. And I'm sorry, not sorry. I Not even what I wanted. I give okay. up. Okay. Okay. Well. Go ahead. I I am I am slowly buying into the Jets little by little, piece by piece. I'm a guy that I've never liked a New York team ever in my life, but the Jets have been bad for so long that I want them to do something good. That's what I was trying to do the whole time. Okay. TJ's calling it week one, New York Jets taking down the Baltimore Ravens at home. Absolutely. And I'm going to say this right now. I love watching Lamar Jackson play. He's an exciting football player. Mobile quarterbacks don't last in this NFL league. I'm telling you. It's been rough sledding. It's been rough sledding. Uh, Not saying the guy's not good. I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve to be in the NFL. All I'm saying is mobile QBs don't last. Well, and not to be a stickler, and it's not, you know, being mobile is a good thing. It's just when uh, running is your first option. Exactly. When, when running tends to be your first option. You know, like Michael Vick lasted a while, but got banged up plenty. Uh, Vince Young really only had the one year. Robert Griffith, I mean, Kaepernick certainly went to the Super Bowl, but fizzled out quickly. Like, these guys are shooting stars, and then it just kind of fades off quick. You know, you got to have, you got to be able to move around, and you also got to be able to dissect the defense. Yep, and you may come into the league and catch fire for a while, but eventually, if a defensive player doesn't figure you out himself, a defensive coordinator will. I actually love the schedule for Baltimore. I love the Sunday night at home against the Bengals on the 9th of October. And then, bam, right back Thursday night, the 27th, they're going to Tampa Bay to take on the GOAT. And then right back at it, Monday night, in New Orleans. I mean, the Ravens better be ready, baby. They better be ready and bring their A game because that could be tough sledding if they, uh, you know, versus the Browns at Tampa Bay at New Orleans and then a bye. You don't want to be going into that bye 0-3 the last couple weeks, that's for sure. But it's exciting. You know, the Ravens, again, they're not going to be an aerial assault by any means, especially without Hollywood Brown now. But ground and pound. Um, hopefully Lamar still got the magic. Mark Andrews is always going to be there at tight end and then just play tough defense. You know, that's what they're all about there in Baltimore, playing tough, tough defense. You got any fireworks going off in your neighborhood? Because I sure do. Nope. Lucky you. Just kidding. I love fireworks. TJ, next up, Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's talk about it. No. Let's talk about it, my friend. We had a little bit of a funky setup here in the screen. You get all the options, whether you want Cameron Hayward or TJ Watt. So let's just read them all. But the Pittsburgh Steelers starting off September 11th, week one, at Cincinnati, at home against New England, at Cleveland, at home against the Jets, at Buffalo, at home against Tampa Bay. So they're doing the every other thing the first couple of weeks. And then they got two away games, at Miami, at Philadelphia, obviously going to lose at Philadelphia before they go into the bye. Two home games, uh, the Saints and the Bengals. 
Then they travel twice to Indianapolis to take on the Colts, to Atlanta to take on the Falcons, at home against the Ravens, to Carolina for the Panthers, at home against the Raiders on December 24th, Christmas Eve, baby. Pittsburgh and the Raiders. I love it. And then at Baltimore, January 1st, January 7th or 8th, we got Cleveland at home to wrap it up. <clears throat> Didn't even give my additions for the Steelers. Let's talk about it. Mitch Trubisky coming over to this team from Buffalo after, you know, a year, just taking a year off, as kind of just on the bench, learning from Josh Allen after all that time in Chicago, just having to be the under the pressure cooker. Trubisky comes over for a fresh start in Pittsburgh, has all the opportunity in the world. This could be his job if he just snatches it from Kenny Pickett. Yeah, Trubisky at quarterback. They added offensive lineman James Daniels. He comes over from Chicago, one of the few Chicago Bears who's actually good these past couple years. The Bears. Uh, yeah. Repping the Bears, baby. Miles Jack, linebacker out of Jacksonville. Speaking of players from bad franchises, Miles Jack comes over to play middle linebacker for the Steelers now. Levi Wallace, uh, cornerback from Buffalo, coming over. I really like that addition, Levi Wallace. Quietly one of the um, better cornerbacks in the league right now. At least he was last year. And then the draft, they added two big-time weapons. Kenny Pickett, a quarterback out of Pittsburgh. They've seen him for the past four years now, right there in their own home stadium. Kenny Pickett. And then they also added Georgia wide receiver, George Pickens. I know our boy Nate loves this selection. George Pickens is a dog, as they say. <clears throat> now, can't say the additions without... Big, big loss here. This is the first time we will see the Pittsburgh Steelers without Big Ben Roethlisberger on the roster Oof. since 2003, ladies and gentlemen. Almost 20 years later. And that is a hell of a run. Hell of a run, Big Ben. Also, no James Washington at wide receiver and no Joe Schobert at linebacker, but they made the additions there to fill those holes. So, TJ, after a good gander at that schedule and knowing what the Steelers are dealing with, I mean, they've got weapons. Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson out there. Uh, no Juju. He's gone. Should have mentioned that loss. But, you know, some still some good weapons, a wide receiver. Now Pickens takes over where Juju left off. You got first-round draft pick Najee Harris in the backfield. Decent offensive line, you know, should be. Hopefully better than last year. Defense still looks damn good. T.J. Watt and the boys are getting after it. But the huge question mark at quarterback between Trubisky and Kenny Pickett. The very unfortunate loss, I mean, we should say of Dwayne Haskins a little earlier this year. So that tragedy did occur. But uh, now got to see what happens here between Trubisky and Pickett. So everybody knows I'm a Cowboys fan by default yeah, because I'm, I'm from Dallas. Um uh, the Steelers are one of those teams I love to hate for no other reason than I'm a Cowboys fan. Um, I am a, a Watt fan. I don't care if it's TJ Watt, JJ Watt, doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to give them. About Derek Watt. Don't know a whole lot about him. <laughs> don't know. But the, the, I mean, TJ Watt, JJ Watt, those those two I, 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 I like. They stick uh, out. The, the, they, they stick out, you know, I think uh, last year, I cannot remember what game it was. I want to say it was, it was a, I, they were in the playoffs last year, right? Pittsburgh? E, no, I don't think they were actually. That, maybe it was their last, their last game. Um, I don't know. Watt was, he was doing everything he could to, to try to do something for the defense making tackles left and right. I mean, his name was called every single play on the defensive side. And uh, it's like, he, as much as I hate Pittsburgh, I was kind of pulling for him. Um, Maybe they were. I don't know. Maybe I'm speaking out of turn here. Maybe they were the seventh seed. <clears throat> I'm going to say six wins. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Just too much question mark, man. The quarterback – if it's Mason Rudolph, they're screwed because we've seen plenty of him, and he just they've given him given him a lot of opportunity. He hasn't done much with it, so can't be Mason Rudolph. I've seen a lot of Trubisky too, man. And I will say, as an Eagles fan, I was very impressed in the double. What gets lost in the double joint game 
was Trubisky made some really good throws in that game. Overall, it's been rough to watch. You know, he's 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 a, when he plays, you can say, yeah, he only played really 13 games in his college career, and they drafted him off that in Chicago. Um, so uh, yeah, a lot more experience coming in from college anyway with Kenny Pickett. I can't wait. I cannot wait to watch this quarterback battle. It's going to be fascinating. Will it be the incumbent Rudolph? Will it be the new man, Trubisky, free agent, hot pickup? Or will it be the hot draft pick? You know, I mean, this is the first time, I believe in a couple of years, that it took all the way till pick 20 for the first quarterback to come off the board. Now, this is famously one of the weaker quarterback classes in recent history. So we'll see if it pays off for Pittsburgh here. You said six wins? Yes, sir. I'm going four and 13, my friend. Ouch. Yes. It's not Detroit, my friend. Come on now. Four and 13. Listen, when I peruse through this schedule, at Cincinnati ain't happening. At home against New England could easily be lost. At Cleveland. So, I mean, that's 0 and 3. Very easy for me to see. Uh, Starting off, you know, Thursday night game there at Cleveland. At home against the Jets is like maybe a relief. At Buffalo, at home against Tampa, at Miami, at Philadelphia. I mean, right there. That's maybe one win I I'm I confidently can say right there in the first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks. Poof. And then, you know, at home against New Orleans, we'll see what Jameis can do. We'll see what he does. Uh, Cincinnati at home, night game, at Indianapolis, you know, Matt Ryan and the boys, a night game. It's just, yeah, I don't know. This The quarterback, I'm fascinated to watch it. I don't think it's going to end up good, obviously. And, uh, yeah, 4-13, and 13, man. Sorry. Sorry, Ty. You were supposed to be here. You could have defended them. Now you can. <laughs> <clears throat> TJ, let's finish it up. Right. Talking about a team nobody loves to talk about. This is the Cleveland Browns. This is the dog pound. This is uh, now officially, maybe officially, Deshaun Watson's team. Uh, Is Baker Mayfield gone from the Browns? Baker Mayfield is not gone. He is still a Cleveland Brown, if you can believe that. Okay. Uh, I would imagine he'll get cut. I think they're holding out hope that they can trade him maybe to Seattle or, you know, Houston, something like that. But at this point, he is a Cleveland Brown, my friend. Wow. Okay. He's a, a Cleveland Brown without me cracking my voice. Is that better? There you go. Key additions for Cleveland. As I mentioned, Deshaun Watson, after a year of much controversy at Houston, did he get – were those massages consensual or not? Who could say? I'm not here to say. Amari Cooper also coming over at a big trade from Dallas, uh, giving up several picks. Cooper is in the house. Tim and Deshaun are good friends, from what I understand. And they also, in a more low key signing, got Jakeem Grant, speedster out of Miami uh, and Chicago, over here to Cleveland. Big loss here for the first time since they drafted him. Cleveland, well, no, never mind. They didn't draft him. Miami did. For the first time in several years, Cleveland will be without wide receiver Jarvis Landry. So, still going to be running through Nick Chubb. Still got the strong offensive line. Still got a very young, talented defense. Miles Garrett, the boys getting after it. But, tough schedule. I'm excited to see what Deshaun does on this team. Last we actually saw him play, he was leading the league in passing yards. So let's see if he can do that yet again. Uh, And we'll run through the schedule here. Starting off the year away in Carolina. Then they are at home against the Jets. At home Thursday night versus the Steelers. At Atlanta. At home against the Chargers. At home against the Patriots week six. Away in Baltimore week seven. Monday Night Football, Week 8 versus the Cincinnati Bengals, division rival. Then Week 9, we got a bye week. Coming back Week 10 for an away game in Miami. Another away game a Week 11. 
Week 11 in Buffalo. Week 12 at home against the Buccaneers. Week 13, they are at Houston. Week 14 at Cincinnati. Week 15 at home against the Ravens. Week 16, New Year's Eve, they are taking on the Saints at home. And then they are wrapping it up at Washington on New Year's Day. And at Pittsburgh on either January 7th or January 8th. All that said, TJ, I have the Browns tying the Cincinnati Bengals in what could be a real dilemma here in the AFC North, figuring out division record, conference record, total points, all that nonsense, head-to-head, because both these teams, in my opinion, are going to be 8-9. and nine. I got the Browns 8-9. and nine, I got the Bengals 8-9. and nine. Okay. I'm... Uh... I'm going to give them seven wins. Are you up right now? Another seven. seven. Seven's the yeah, lucky number for me. Yeah, I did. Are you up right Jeez. now? Golly. What kind of websites are you looking at? It's this freaking app, man. I'm getting rid of this thing. So um, I do want to go back to that Texans game. I think that's going to be a big one. Um, I can't remember if it was at home or away, but uh, I, I, I said this earlier Ah, in one of our early, earlier shows, Deshaun Watson is going to have a lot to prove this year. And I yep. think he, he's going to be going into this season, or at least he should. Let me rephrase that. He should be going into the season with a big, huge chip on his shoulder with a lot to prove. Um, I think two quarterbacks to look out for. And again, this is my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. It, I know it doesn't amount to a hell of beans, but – Deshaun Watson and Russell Wilson both should have a huge chip on their shoulders this year because we all know what happened in Seattle. So Wilson's now with Denver, who I think could potentially cause some havoc with, at the right time. And um, Deshaun Watson, I mean, new team, new start, fresh start. We all know what happened last year. Uh, wh- whether the allegations were true or not, it's behind him now so he can move forward and focus on football. Yeah, I mean, what a nightmare. You know, you're at the top of your game. Like I said, he was leading the league in passing yards. They had just come off that playoff loss versus Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. Otherwise, it would have been them advancing, you know, to the AFC uh, Conference Championship that year. Take on the Chiefs. So, you know, follow that up with just all the nonsense and the controversy. And, you know, was were the allegations true? Were they not true? And the, the, you sit out a whole year. You know, you lose it to things that may or may not even be true you know it's just, what a nightmare again so let me repeat myself and if, yeah i think it's going to be very exciting to watch this browns team i think that if you take the plays that were open for baker last year you know that seemed to be a lot of mis misconnections so to speak between him and obj you know the play action game works very well for cleveland nick chubb is a very effective runner this offensive line can move people, and when you have the play action going, Deshaun Watson can throw the ball. He's got a beautiful deep ball. I mean, he doesn't have the same restrictions that Baker Mayfield does when it comes to arm strength. Amari Cooper is a very good route runner. We'll see what – you know, He's he gets banged up often, man, whether it's an ankle or a knee or this or that. Like, He's very effective when he's on the field. I don't know how he makes cuts because I, I feel like at this point it's just duct tape holding those ankles together. But, you know – if they have the chemistry, and I Amari Amari Cooper is still a very good route runner, uh, they just they just extended J- David Njoku tight end, so <laughs> they're very confusing when it comes to how they allocate resources at tight end. You know whether they bring in Austin Hooper and Harrison Bryant and David Njoku, but yeah, I like the one-two punch they have there with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. And now, finally, hopefully, this is what they've been searching for all these years. Cleveland's never had the guy at quarterback. They're hoping it was going to be Baker. You know, a few years here with uh, Kelly Holcomb and the couch. Yeah, that didn't work out at all. But, man, if you want to – Derek Anderson, you know, let's pull some names out of the grave of Cleveland here. But Yeah, it, it's, it's going to be fun. I think this is the first year where a lot of people – not the first year. I mean, they're excited for Baker, but – I'm excited to see because I, I wasn't a Baker believer, man. I just his game didn't translate to me out of Oklahoma. I thought it was going to be a lot of batted balls, and sure enough, that's exactly what it is. He doesn't have the right angles 
Uh, he's too short right now. He doesn't work the pocket like a Russell Wilson does. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. It's very awkward to have him not only on the team, but with all those commercials too. I mean, golly, do you remember all the freaking commercials that would come on with Baker Mayfield and, uh, hey, yeah. how you want to turn on the lights and all that stupid shit? Like, God, I, get out of here. I do want to say this because I've, I've been saving up for this when I found out we were talking about the uh, AFC here. In my opinion, one of the most underrated guys, even though he got bit by the injury bug, Chubbs is, in my opinion, the real deal. Oh, again, yeah. Again, if he can stay healthy, the guy can do some damage to a defense. They have an offensive line that is good enough for him to run behind. Uh, now, when it comes to injuries, I look at two things. How sturdy is your player and how well is your medical staff? Mm-hmm. Because I'm a firm believer that medical staff in any sport, I don't care if it's high school, I don't care if it's college, I don't care if it's pros, they play a part in it. So is that medical staff doing all that they can as well? But Chubbs, I mean, I I am a Chubb fan. I have been since he came into the league. Um, I, I mean, I, not like I followed his entire career, but I I pull for the guy. If he's on, I'm watching him because he's just he, to me he's a fun running back to watch. I love a good Chubb. I'm I'm always a full Chubb. And with that, guys. We nailed it tonight. Nate, I hope you had a damn good time at that family event you told me about five minutes before the show started. <laughs> yeah, I'm throwing you under the bus. DJ, I hope you've enjoyed your Memorial Day weekend. You too. Thank you to all the service men and women out there. Obviously, this is for you. We love you. I was very sick Friday, a little bit of Thursday. Of course, my awesome immune system, I'm feeling better now. We did some cooking today. I'm about to shoot off some fireworks like an American. Wake up my daughter. You know, do the real good dad thing. I appreciate everyone stopping by. Dylan Moran, commenting, joining, liking, sharing, doing all the fun stuff. We'll see you again next week, Monday nights, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time, baby. This is mostly football. And guess what? If you like seeing my face, if you like seeing TJ's face, we're going to be here again, Tuesday nights. Just be a dad podcast. Same time, same place. Catch that show wherever you get podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Big shout out to Bullhorn. We love Bullhorn. Any country, any gender, any age, just above 18. Because, you know, we get dirty. Guys, I'm Efforts. This was episode 7. TJ, thank you so much. I'm Efforts, thank you so much. Peace out. Bye!